Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio and you join us for our uh, October month and today we are painting a flash gits knob. A lot of people find uh, yellows quite difficult to do, I'm going to show you a pretty simple way of doing it and we're going to be using a lot of glazing techniques on this. Uh, we may do a, a single video just on glazing and wet palettes at some point but I'm hoping you get the gist of everything just through this video here. Now to start off this yellow I'm going to start off with a base of XV88 by Games Workshop as you can see that's really watery um, even though it's a base paint and we're just going to take um, our time to do a few layers there um, we tend to do more than what Duncan does we do more than two thin layers and that's probably the best way to do it as you don't want to clog up any of those details let it look cloudy go over it again and just keep going over it it's all about patience and what we're going to do in this particular video is we're going to break each part down so I'm going to work on the shoulder pads for a while and the armor and um, I'm going to block in these two colours so there's something to look at on the screen and uh, this is Caliban Green by Games Workshop you want to be careful not to get any of that on the armour but um, that should be relatively easy as it was a flash gear I decided I'd uh, paint this particular orc with a combi weapon and uh, also attach another gun to his back just to add to the look I could have done flash gits, but the only box of flash gits I've got I'm using for converting and I didn't want to use those. Next we're going to use Castellian Green by Games Workshop and uh, this is very very thin, it's almost a wash consistency so you, you, you'll, you'll use your wet palette and uh, wipe off nearly every bit of paint from the brush so you've barely got any residue left and uh, just gently stroke the top of the model where you want it to go and you want to go from the shaded area to the extreme highlight because the way the brush ends is where most of the leftover pigment is going to uh, end up. And this is the same colour, uh, that, that transition I've put in now is just a, a reminder to let me know that we're still using that same colour, I just wanted to show you it building up uh, rather than having like th two to three minutes of me painting that same colour on. And as you can see the layers really build up nicely and that's only two colours there's lots and lots of layers of this guys and you can make as many mistakes as you want as long as your paint's thin enough you can easily go over it without it ever really showing up after that to uh, smooth down any anything that's uh, not quite right we're going to use a bile tank green by games workshop with a little bit of water in it we don't want it too strong right now and we don't want to completely tone down the colours and highlights that we've done. After this washer's dried you'll see how the, uh, the blends there really start working together. This colour will also tone the previous colour that we've done a slightly different tone and then what we tend to do is uh, come back to doing the Castellian green again now it's had a wash and because we're using such thin paint it will make a, a difference in the uh, tones as you can see there it's building up really easily over that brow and there's uh, barely any paint on this brush at all you want to use nice gentle brush strokes and go at the direction you want the colour to go um, I know a lot of people just paint straight on over those patches in random directions but that's how you get a blocky sort of look to the uh, skin after that I'm going to be using Death World Forest and uh, because the paint's so thin again, you can go directly over everything without completely covering it up. Um, and that helps that transition really build up. I know we focused a lot on the brow on this video, it was just the uh, best bit of footage. And also the uh, knuckles there are quite easy to show you the build up, build up of colour. Don't forget to build up the areas on the ears and the top of the um, shoulder muscles just work from the shade to the light and this will take a few hours but the reason it takes a few hours don't bother doing this with your boys because they take too long um, but your knobs you're only going to have 10 in a unit so it's worth spending a little bit more time on them making them stand out plus they've got two wounds so they'll be on the table a bit longer now we're going to use games workshops bail or brown and we're going to glaze that from the bottom of the shoulder pad to the center of the shoulder pad and the paint's so thin that it will dry very quickly, especially under the uh, lamp that I've got for the, uh, for the desk. Just building that up from the bottom to the corners. 
as you can see that's really building up nicely now giving a good transition and any of you guys can do this it's just a matter of practice and barely using any pit and it's about patience and not rushing it but definitely rush those up boys if you've got an airbrush just do the skin with the airbrush and then uh, be really quick with the uh, armor now we're going to use seraphin sepia on the yellow like I said at the beginning of the video, a lot of people find uh, yellow difficult to do. Um, it's actually one of my favourite colours to paint, because everyone seems to find it really difficult. Um, and we're going to use Seraphine Sepia washing from the top down to the uh, bottom where most of our shade was. And this is going to blend our Balo Brown and XV88 together. Once that's dry and give us a, a nice weathered tone to the underneath, we're going to start picking the tops back up with Baylor Brown. Starting at about halfway through each bit of armor or bit of metal, a bit of plating, sorry, that's supposed to be yellow, and we're going to work that up to the top with really, really thin layers. Again, this takes uh, quite some time to do, but it's, it's worth doing, and like by the end of it, it's definitely worth doing, as uh, they will stand out on the battlefield. After that, on top of the bale or brown, we're going to be adding a Zamzi Desert, and that'll be the top quarter of each of the plates and bits of armor. We're also going to put some chipping and everything on these later on as well to really make them stand out. Take your time with this, guys. There's a there's really no rush. If you get bored, put it down, paint something else for a bit. At this point, we're only doing the uh, top quarter of the model in just the Zamzi Desert. Then to uh, blend that in, so there's no hard brush strokes, we're going to do the Seraphin Sepia wash again, watered down in a couple of layers. One or two should do it. And at this point you'll get a nice bright yellow at the top that's a faded, sort of a pale yellow where the light's hitting, to a nice rich orange that looks slightly rusty and also shaded at the same time. You can see that really is building up very nicely on the uh, feet and on the top bits of armour. Now the next colour is a model colour and it's a, a desert yellow which is a really pale yellow rather than bright because we don't want this uh, this yellow to be too bright on the highlights. Um, when light hits these things it just makes it muted uh, rather than bright and I think that's where a lot of people go wrong doing yellow. So we're just going to make that more pale as we build up those edges and uh, the corners. and. Uh, the serif and sepia has been given as a nice dark tone to everything else. Now what I'm doing here on the armor is putting on tiny specks of a morning fang brown and these gonna, are going to act as our rust chips. Uh, you can make these as big or as small as you want, I would recommend bigger uh, because you're going to have to highlight them twice and that's going to be uh, quite time consuming as well but at this point we're breaking up that yellow and uh, making it a little bit more orky. Now we're going to use Panzer Aces Dark Rust and instead of highlighting the underneath of all these chips that you've done, we're going to highlight the top edge of it. All you're going to do is go around the edge of the chip and what that's going to do is add a shade to the top of the chip, uh, making it look more three dimensional. Um, this is quite time consuming and I'm using a Windsor & Newton triple zero so I can stay in control of that paint. After that we're going back to the desert yellow and we're going to highlight the underneath of the chips. So now you've got Panzer Aces, Morning Fang and a vibrant yellow. This gives the effect that the light's hitting the top so there's some shade where the paint's chipped and there's also a highlight at the bottom where the um, light would hit. And this makes all your paint chips look really really uh, three dimensional and like you've actually got depth to them. You can also use this desert yellow for your edge highlights for this particular type of armor. Now I'm going to use Death World Forest and Death Guard Green. I'm going to mix those up about 50-50 uh, to really steadily glaze up the rest of the uh, skin. And we're not completely done with the skin yet. Um, as I get further into the model, I realize that I want to bring it up a bit more because uh, the yellows are so vibrant that the skin, by contrast, looks quite dark and uh, dull. So later on we will add some more color to this skin. But again, we're just building this up in very, very thin layers. Um, you can see the face starting to become very pronounced. 
there's barely any paint at all on this brush. Now the mouth, I decided I'd fill in the whole mouth with a dark rust uh, by Panzer Aces, just as a base, uh, just to get a nice solid colour. Then what I did was use beige by Model Colour, um, because I've got several of these orcs to do for this month, and uh, I want to do a different skin tone on each of them, I want to do a different set of uh, bone effects and metal works and everything else, which I've managed to do, so... Hopefully you'll uh, subscribe and watch the rest of those. Now after we've done the beige, I'm going to start picking out the highlights of the teeth with just ivory by model colour. Which is a colour I find myself using more and more often. And uh, the camera's obviously not picking this up very well because they're such vibrant colours. Keep your hands up my ivory. <laughs> Shut up Andy. Um, it's a shame it didn't show up well, but uh, because of the light beaming on it and everything, it's reflecting that back. But what we'll do now is we'll add a Reclan Flesh Shade by Games Workshop into that mouth and really start toning all those teeth and the gums down. The, the mouth on this particular orc was um, a bit awkward to paint with the shape of it and everything and get on camera. But hopefully uh, you can see what's going on here. We're also going to pick out the lip later on and uh, really bring some character to it. So Death World Forest is used on its own and that's what we're going to use to pick out the bottom lip. It's going to be almost a full a full colour there, we're just going to cover the whole thing. Um, but you're only wanting to feather that towards the bottom of the lips where it joins the rest of the mouth. Because they have a very pronounced bottom lip. We're going to bring that up as you can see from that bottom part across the main lip and uh, it's going to be quite a solid Death Guard colour when you're finished. But we're not finished with that there, we want to tone it so it looks different to the rest of the skin. And after that we're going to use Dead Flesh by Game Air, which is a very nice thin paint, sort of like a, a much lighter Zandri dust, but with a bit of pink added to it, so you could probably mix up some Cadian and Zandri dust to get something similar. And at this point we're getting further and further into the centre of that lip and uh, just blending those in. And again, the uh, the lighting's not great here because I'm using such bright colours that the um, it just looks really pale. Then we're going to use a scale 75 colour called Moonray Flesh, which again is a rather it's a light, vibrant pink. Um, it's a very pale colour again, and obviously his mouth looks, well his lip even looks uh, really really pale and white at the moment. But it won't do when we're done because we're going to add some washes to that. A technique I've started doing here is um, bringing up extreme highlights, then using a wash to uh, really bring them down, uh, so the actual highlights show through really well. This is Drushy Violet by Games Workshop, watered down a lot. That's going to start giving a, a pink purpley tone. You want this to go underneath the lip and towards the chin, so it um, looks like it joins properly. You don't just want a hard line where the lips start and the chin begins. Then to blend that in even more, we're going to use a Thonian Camo Shade and we're going to start blending this from the bottom of the lip to the centre. That way the greens will start blending into those purples and all the other tones that we've just done. And this is going to give a really pronounced lip with a, a lot of shape to it. You can also fill in those little grooves with the Thonian Camo Shade as well that it's got on its lip and uh, pick them out as well with a brighter colour if you wish. Maybe just pick them out with the uh, moon ray again ever so slightly. And as you can see, now it, the lip looks toned and blended to the rest of the face. Now we have Steel Legion Drab for the shirt, because I didn't want to leave too much black uh, on the model. As I'm also doing goths at some point, and there's tons of black on that one. You want to be really careful at this point. Keep your paint really thin, as usual. Just be really careful near those edges as you've probably spent like an hour or two just doing the skin so far. That's about how long it takes me to get the skin done. After Steel Legion Drab, we're going to use Dryad Bark for the leather work. Needed two different tones here, so I started with uh, something familiar. It's going to be the um, usual leather one for those that watch all of our videos. Uh, it'll be a Dryad Bark and a Gothor Brown. But I'm going to add a few more layers and blends in there as well. 
Again, you want to be really careful not to get any of this on the yellows and the skin now you've done all that work. After that, we're going to glaze the Gothor Brown by Games Workshop into the top parts of the boots and leathers. You want this really, really thin because it only really blends properly and looks like leather when it's very, very thin. You put it on too stark, it, it just doesn't work at all. You want to be able to see your Gothor, you want to be able to see your Dryad Bark, sorry. Uh, through the Gothor brown ever so slightly, that's how we get the right colour tone for it. We're also going to do the uh, gun pouch on his back as well with that. Next, once we've built up all the um, colour there, we're going to start using a couple of layers of watered down Agrax Earth Shade Wash. Really building up the shade in the recesses, which is why we're watering it down. We want the tops to be shaded, but we really want to pull the colours down to the bottom without it pooling. So do a couple of layers, let it dry, maybe do another one closer towards the bottom. And that's going to give you a nice leathery blend and uh, really fade those leathers so they look a bit more weathered and worn. Which is really what you want for orc leather and orc materials. Next, going to start the gun with a uh, layer of lead belcher over a black base as per usual. It just gives a uh, much better coverage. Again, you want to be really, really careful with this. Um, take your time because you've already spent forever painting the model uh, and you don't want to get it on anything you've already painted. If you do, you can probably add chips to the armor if you get it on the armor or touch it up in some other manner. Now we're using black by Model Air Metallic and I've uh, watered that down a lot to a wash consistency and I want to start washing that into the um, grooves. I'd say it's more of a glaze, it's somewhere in between there. We're going to start washing from the top to the bottom and that's going to start toning it so the metals look more mucky than usual. You could just do the Model Air Metallic Black first and then go up to the Lead Belcher, it doesn't really matter. It's just the way I decided to do this particular model. Then we're going to add a Strong Tone by Army Painter. Because I didn't want to use an Agrax um, because that would be too warm and too red already. And we've got plenty of Agrax washes on the leathers, so I decided to use a strong tone on all the metallics. Uh, giving it more of a weathered, dirty look, uh, a bit of rust. Because although they have the uh, snazziest bits, the flash kits, there's, you know, they're still mucky. Now we're going to use Steel by Model Air Metallic. I'm going to start bringing out the tips of all the metallic work, or all the silver metallic work anyway. In fact, I think this model only has silver metallic work. Make sure you get the vents in the gun barrel as well, because uh, anything forward facing on this model needs to be well pronounced. Although as a player, you only ever really see the back of the model. Which is a bit awkward if you ask me. So deliberately face them all the wrong way. That's what That was Andy's suggestion anyway. Now we're going to use Steel Legion Drab. And we're going to use this for all the straps that aren't leather, the bandages and things that they wrap around their um, gun barrels and other random bits. There's one on his back and there's one on the magazine for his gun. You want to really feather this in smoothly and uh, make sure it's glazed really well. Then we're going to use Carrick Stone and we're going to bring that corner up even further. I think you'll see me do this on the Lord of Contagion one in a bit more depth. But yeah, Again, I'm still glazing these, I'm not just putting hard lines on. And you really want to feather the corners. You can let it blend out into itself from the corner down to where the bandage wraps around itself. And just let that get darker. It makes it much more three-dimensional and more pronounced. Then of course I'm going to pull an Agrax Earth Shade Wash into those recesses. Keeping it worn down. I'm also going to do that on what looks like a bandage or strap around his wrist. I was going to go with leather, but I decided to go with the straps like the rest of it, seeing as there's a lot of leather already. And don't forget to do the back of the gun as well, even though it is quite awkward. Next, I'm going to army paint a strong tone. And I'm going to wash the bottom halves again. So at this point you've got a really vibrant top to all these bandages and a very weathered, dirty looking underneath. 
which uh, I'm quite pleased with. I'm gonna probably carry this on with my actual, like, in my actual army, using this for the straps. I think it looks really, really good. Now we're gonna use Carrick Stone again, just to bring up those uh, corners because we've obviously washed them and now they've faded. But we're just gonna use Carrick Stone and do an even smaller amount before leaving some of that shaded Carrick Stone that we've made on the underneath of that. Again, I'm still using that Windsor Newton because at this point the areas that I'm painting are uh, really, really small. Now Gorthor Brown again. And again, really small areas this time, just the very tops. Uh, we've put some washes on those, we've toned that leather down. Now it's just time to bring in some highlights for them. But uh, you don't want to re-highlight the whole thing. We're just doing the tops of the boots where the leathers bend. Uh, tops of the uh, gun holster. And there's a couple of stitches and parts at the bottom of that as well, uh, which bend the holster up, so you want to highlight the bottom of those bits as well. Now for the fingers, all I really used was um, Talon Sand by Games Workshop. The reason I used Talon Sand is because we've used almost every other Games Workshop um, yellow tone or muted sort of tone on this model. I needed to start doing something different so the fingers would stand out and not look too much like everything else. And Talon Sand is somewhere between you know, Zandri Dust and uh, Bale or Brown, so it sort of fits the palette still and doesn't look out of place, but will also stand out enough. I couldn't decide for ages what I wanted to do with this uh, missile, uh, so I left that almost till last. And we're going to use Mephiston, no, Corn Red, sorry, as the base for that. Again, still really, really watered down as you can tell on the on the video. But that's just the way to do it, guys. Um, spend more time painting your models. You pay enough money for them. So uh, take your time. There's no rush. After Mephiston Red. Oh, sorry, no, it's Mephiston Red after the Corn Red. My mistake. Um, there's so many paints on this list that uh, it's easy to get lost. And what we're going to do is highlight the top of the tip of the missile and just work towards the edges of the uh, fins on the missile as well. You can be slightly messy with this point because we're going to paint the rest of that black. So if you get over overdo it a bit and get red on the black, don't worry about it. Army Painter Strong Tone is then used to tone down those Talon Sand Claws. I don't think I really did much else after those. Um, not on the hands or claws anyway. But it's really starting to come along this model. I was quite chuffed with the result. It'll look even better once we've given them an oil wash. Now we're going to use Evil Sun Scarlet. Working that towards the edge of all those reds. Same as always. Um, just be really, really careful. And we're going to use this as an edge highlight eventually, but first we'll have to tone everything down. Just really small brush strokes and small amounts of paint. As you can see that colour's building up nice on those edges and uh, we'll do the same to the front of the missile as well. Now we're going to wash all that down with a Caraber Crimson Wash, uh, water down. The reason we water it down is because if you put too much on and make it too dark, you've made it too dark, you can't really change anything about that. But if you do it in thin layers, it's not dark enough, just add another thin layer to it and you're fine. Once investing so much time and money into a, a model that you're painting, then um, you really should just uh, stay focused and do the small layers. It's really worth it, guys. I can't say that enough. Now I'm using Vallejo Black Primer, um, and I'm trying to do a spiral on the end of the missile, which I thought I'd show you guys. All I've done is start in the center with a slight curve and then just try and follow that round with the same angle with my hand while rotating the model. Uh, I sped this up a lot, uh, which is why it's so jumpy. You can probably understand why, because it takes a long time to do this, but it, I'm pretty much following it around the same angle that I started with over and over again. I would say it's not the neatest of spirals on the rocket, but um, you definitely want to be careful because you put all those layers on, and at this point, the mistakes, um, you're not going to be able to just highlight that back up the way it was. And now as a finishing touch for that, we're going to use Evil Sun Scarlet again. Just to bring out the uh, propellers, propellers, fins, and uh, just highlight those with an edge highlight to make them nice and sharp. 
I do realize this has been a very long video. It's a, it's a real pain to edit this together. So the next color will be Eschen Grey by Games Workshop and anything that's left now is black. We're gonna use that to start edge highlighting that. There's not much left that's black to be honest. A couple of logos on his armor and on his weapons and uh, the missile part, which I repainted black. Um, to get rid of any red smudges or mistakes that were on there. Now, the trousers, I didn't really do that much on the trousers to be honest. Um, and I've, I've done, we've done all these washers, we've done all these glazers, I didn't want to edge highlight them. So I just used black grey by model colour and um, glazed it up once. Because when I put an oil wash on uh, over those trousers, that's going to rest in all those gaps. Um, and really tone it black again and the black grey by model colour gives the sort of appearance that the clothes are being hit by a light and it just mutes the black colour. Now for the shirt, since we haven't done anything since the Steel Legion drab, we're just going to use a Carrick Stone. At this point I knew exactly what I was doing with this model as I was getting close to finishing it and I knew what colours to use. So a Carrick Stone watered down and glazed up from the bottom. A Carrick Stone can be a bit of a pain in the arse to glaze, um, but just take your time, really thin layers, can be quite tedious. And then Army Painter Strong Tone is used to tone that from the top down to the bottom of the shirt as well. So it will smooth out the Carrick Stone, it will also make the underneath of the shirt look dirty and grimy, which uh, you'd expect an orc shirt to be. Just be uh, really careful not to get that on anything you've already done. But at this point, guys, we are nearly finished with this thing. Now, I did say we were going to come back to this skin, uh, pick it out a bit more, because in comparison to everything else, it looks dirty and dark. And we're going to use just straight Death Guard Green and uh, glaze that up again. And at this point, the Death Guard Green really works with all those other yellows that are on there. And it uh, really sets the tone for the skin bringing all those features together and like I said in the beginning of the video it's all about layers and patience if you have 10 of these on the board they will look epic so there you have it guys that's one orc knob painted up in the bad moon color scheme um, you really want to aim to get all your knob units to this sort of standard because they look really good on the battlefield and um, they're actually quite a lot of fun to paint, there's tons of detail and character in these. I did forget to paint the stitches in the um, gun holster on his back, but it's easy to miss details when you're painting a model like this. Skin tone takes some time, so you're looking at a few hours for the skin and a few hours for the armour. The rest of it is just in, uh, little details, and if you really can't be bothered, you could just skip forward and uh, do a much more basic version of some of those colour schemes. I hope um, if you've started collecting orcs and you're doing bad moons, this helped you a lot with your uh, painting and you learnt something. We'll catch you in the next video, so don't forget to hit that subscribe because we've got a lot more videos coming out, two every week, and um, share with your friends because uh, every share helps us out as well. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.